Thank you. <clears throat> this meeting will be held in accordance with California Government Code Section 59453, Subdivision E of the Ralph M. Brown Act, California Government Code, uh, Section 54950 ET Sequence, Series uh, Resolution Number 2021-101, and the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act, while this meeting will be physically open to the public. Given the state of the emergency regarding the threat of COVID-19, members of the public may also participate and comment via the application Zoom. Zoom meeting information is on the post agenda. Remote public comment is also available for the city council meeting by emailing the city clerk at cityclerk at ci.series.ca.us by 5 p.m. the day of the meeting, including in the agenda item number or public comment period in the subject line of the email. The clerk may read written comments into the record if specifically requested to do so at the beginning of your email. Your written comment will be distributed to the city council and kept on file as part of the official record of the city council. Welcome everybody to the chambers today, November 9th, 2021. This is a special city council meeting. I, um, can we start the process and I call, call to order, please? Council member Casey. Here. Council member Rhino. Here. Mayor Silvera. Here. Mayor Lopez. Here. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. If everybody please stand. Yeah. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. United States of America. To the Republic of America. Nation. God. We're going to begin with citizens' communications, everyone. While the City Council welcomes and encourages participation in the City Council meetings, adopt a rule, allow more than, no more than five minutes, Resolution 2007-106, for expression of non-agenda items. Matter, matters under the jurisdiction of the City Council and not on the posted agenda may be addressed by the general public. However, California law prohibits the City Council from taking any action on any matter which is not posted on the agenda unless it is determined to be an emergency by the City Council. Citizens are entitled to address the city council on any agenda item subject to the five minute revision. And we will begin if there's any comments on Zoom. I do not see any hand raised okay. here. We do have a, a yellow card here today. Um, the person's name is uh, Carrie uh, Silvers. Are you here? Come on up, please. Your time to shine. How you doing, ma'am? Good morning. Good morning. Did you, did you say good morning? You threw me off too. Good afternoon. It's good evening. Always morning. There you go. So you're throwing me off as well. Um, Welcome. I'm a district voter, and I want my preference to be that John R. Good. Donald. Just just a heads up, I don't mean to cut you off, but we are going to open up for comments after the applications. If you want to save uh, your comments and after we see the applications, it's up to you. But you're welcome to speak during citizen communication. Am I supposed to speak now or later? No, you, you can speak once we have, I'm giving you the option that you can speak oh. after we have all the applicants come up. If, oh. if it relates no, to that. I've read over the applicants. I'd rather get it over. You'd rather get it over with? Yes, I'm not a Go right speaker. ahead. Let's go. I want John R. Osgood, John Osgood to represent District 4 president. I want someone honest like and worthy of the position. That's all I have. That's all you have to say? Yep. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Any members of the public that would like to speak during citizen communications? Okay. And we did, did we receive any emails? Mayor. Okay. Moving on, public comment period is now closed. Moving on to new business, uh, City Council District 4 interviews and possible appointments, resolution number 2021-117, appointing a member to fill the District 4 vacancy to serve until the city's next general municipal election to be held on November 8th, 2022. <clears throat> the way we're going to go about this process, is we have three candidates here today. And we're going to go old school. I'm going to pick out of this cup here for the first person to go up. 
This person will have 15 minutes uh, to interview. And after all the applicants have been interviewed, the council will open up for comments from the public and then each council member will make a comment. So let's go ahead and start this process. First person is John Osgood. Please step up. Today's your day. <clears throat> Most hey. council meetings are Excuse my me, day. Man. So um, just before I, before I, uh, before we continue, go ahead, sir. Are we going to excuse the other two candidates when one is interviewing? If we did that last time, then we'll do that if that's the case. So we'll have the other two candidates step outside. Thank you. Yeah. So Osgood. So one thing that I did leave out is we're actually going to ask you questions after your opening statement. Okay. That's so fine. go ahead and start with your opening statement. Well, first of all, I would have been okay with the two gentlemen staying in the room. I don't have anything to hide from anybody. Uh, just like to let the citizen know, Carrie, it doesn't get any easier. I'm up here every week. You got the same jitters. Uh, my name's John Osgood. I've been a lifelong resident of Ceres. I chose to buy a home here. The very few years I wasn't here was because my mother remarried when I was a child. I decided to come back before my high school was up to graduate at Series High in 1994. 1994, I obtained the rank of Eagle Scout. As you all are probably well aware, that's not a small accomplishment. It takes a lot of fortitude to even reach that rank. 90% of the boys that entered Boy Scouts achieved that. That's something I'm very proud of. I'm a direct descendant of eight members of the Mayflower Voyage. They landed in Massachusetts Bay Colony before it was a colony. The Osgood family, three brothers, left as noblemen from England and came shortly thereafter on the second voyage to the, Man to the Massachusetts Bay Colony. My passion comes from that heritage and that ancestry. I know the council is well aware of, of my, the passion I have for the law, the passion I have for the constitutions. And uh, if chosen, I will represent District 4 with a firm grasp of the constitutions, firm, firm grasp of the laws of the state of California. And I will use those documents as my guiding principle. Uh, I'd like to take questions from you all. Okay, we're going to begin with uh, Council Member Casey on question number one. Mr. Osgood, what do you feel are your most important qualifications for the appointment to the City Council? The most important qualification I have is I understand how Republic is meant to run. I understand that as a representative of the people, it's not my will to dictate what the decision is, but the will of the people, the voice of the people through me as their mouthpiece. I also understand what the laws of the state of California are. I also understand intimately what the constitutions are and how they apply to our governance. Thank you, Mr. Osgood. Mr. Osgood, what do you accomplish while a part of the council? You guys hear me week in and week out. Most of my complaints are we are not performing adequately. We are not living up to our responsibilities. We're not hearing the people and we're not responsive to the people. If chosen to be on the council, I'd like to change the direction the council's going where, where it seems the citizenry feels they're not heard and, that, and their voice doesn't matter. I think if we had strong leadership type of person on the council that is uh that stood up and held those ideals that it, it it would be mutually beneficial to everyone in town thank you okay i'll go ahead and ask you question number three what problems issues or concerns do you see facing the city and how do you propose that we address these issues? Well, we have a lot of issues. Most of them have to do with the municipal code. We hear it 
week in, week out at our council meeting. Uh, the citizens want the municipal code adhered to. Some citizens would, would like to see changes or, or different procedures added to the municipal code. Municipal code is our governing document. That, that municipal code is not just there to dictate to the people how we live, but it tells us as a government and as a governing body how we will perform the people's business. So I would, I would like to, uh, to see, you know, some direction in, in municipal code uh, changes or uh, amendments implemented, and that would be a goal of mine. Thank you. Last question. The last question, is there anything you'd like to add for our consideration? Uh, no, I think you guys are pretty familiar with me. I would just like to say, remember the passion that I have for series. I'm here week in and week out. I am the only applicant that's been at every council meeting via Zoom or in personal attendance, not only since the meetings were opened, but since the beginning of the year. I've been instrumental in municipal code language with, with the, the overnight camping uh, code where I, I petitioned the council and, and city staff for inclusion of, of allowance for commercial vehicles. I did that so that we were equitable. Every time I come before you as a council, I'm, I'm asking for, for equality for everyone, for sound financial decisions, and for the will of the people to be heard and upheld. Thank you, Mr. Osgood. I'll go ahead and uh, choose the next name. Maybe you can go out there and grab this person here, which will be Daniel Martinez. If you grab him, please. Welcome, Daniel. You can begin with your opening statement, then we have a couple questions to ask you. Right. Well, first, I would like to thank you, Mayor Lopez, Vice Mayor Silvera, Councilmember Casey, and Councilmember Rhino for allowing me this opportunity to speak tonight. I'd also like to thank my opponents who aren't in the room with me, Mr. Conda and Mr. Osgood, members of the city staff, and the citizens of Ceres. My wife and I have grown up in Ceres. We moved back into the city six years ago and have owned our current home going on three now. We have two sons, our oldest, Dominic, who is seven, who attends Sam Vaughn Elementary, and our youngest son, Dean, who is two. <laughs> We're also expecting a third little boy, Dylan and Mark. My grandparents immigrated to Ceres from Mexico in the late 1960s. My parents met well in high school, with my father attending Ceres High and graduating from there. I was born in Los Angeles. When I was very young, my family moved back home to Ceres. I attended Walter White Elementary, played baseball at CYB, and attended Mass at St. Jude's Parish with my grandparents. I have degrees in communications and social and behavioral sciences, I work as a quality and inventory manager. Most recently, I was appointed to the Planning Commission for the City of Ceres. I ran for this seat during the 2020 elections, coming up short. However, I'm very proud of my campaign and how it finished, and I'm extremely grateful for the 700 votes that I had received from members of this district. Since the elections, I've continued to be an active member in the community, attending Guillermo Ochoa's park dedication with my family, having a booth at the trunk or treat, coaching youth sports as a member of the Series Lions Club and as a member of the board of Series Youth Baseball. Okay, we have a series of questions. We can start with Councilmember Casey. <clears throat> Mr. Martinez, what do you feel are your most important qualifications for the appointment to the city of city council. Uh, thank you, council member Casey. I believe that my degree in communications, along with my continuous practice and uh, <clears throat> growth and active listening, as well as my critical thinking and experiences in management with conflict resolution will benefit me. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Martinez, what do you hope to accomplish while a part of the council? Thank you, Council Member Reno. One year isn't much time, but I plan on hitting the ground running. I understand that there are many issues that I will need to brush up on, that I will need to adapt and learn quickly. Uh, one issue or multiple issues that I'm hoping to address is to work with code enforcement and staff to find ways through social media to address issues like dumping, speeding, and uh, blight in our city. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Martinez, what problems, issues, or concerns do you see facing the city and how would you propose they be addressed? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, from some of the last meetings that I've attended or participated on through Zoom, I've noticed a lot of citizens have concerns with our budget, um, bonuses to our city workers, pay increases, our reserves, and even our per diem. I'd like to work with staff and find ways to through social media, share information that alleviates some of that animosity. I'd also like to work on finding our uh, permanent city manager. And I understand that in the coming months, we're gonna have many important issues facing the city of Ceres, and that by appointing one of the three of us tonight and having a full council, we can avoid some of the two two deadlocks we experienced during the beginning of the year when we had an empty seat in district one. Thank you. Okay, is there anything you'd like to add to for our consideration. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor Silvera. Our city's motto is together we achieve. It is simple and true. It is like a beacon of light that can help realign us with our values and help us continue to keep the city of Ceres the great city that it is. Uh, some of the values and priorities of our city are some of the same things that I teach my children and try to live my life by. To respect our elders, respect our superiors, and especially respect our community. That is why I'm proud to live in a community that puts those values above all. My plan is to provide current and future citizens with municipal services, which will improve their quality of life, their safety and prosperity. And like our city mission statement says, I plan on doing this with compassion, professionally, and in a cost-effective manner, promote fairness and inclusion for all citizens. Thank you. Would you like me to grab Mr. Conda for you? Yes, please. Sure. Conda, welcome. Um, if you can please begin with the opening statement, then we have a series of questions we'll be asking you afterwards. My name is Mother Singh Kanda, and I am living in the series 20 years, and I have a local business, city of series, and I raised my family in the city of series, and city is my downtown city. Too. That, that's your statement, sir? We have a, a couple of questions that we want to ask you. Uh, Councilmember Casey. Uh, Mr. Kendall, thank you for being here, and being interested in what do you feel are your most important qualifications for the appointment to the city council? As a, my, I am a very businessman in 20 years, so I know how to write the checks and how we get the new jobs in our city. And I want to make our city together because our goal is council is together we achieve. We all together make our city to implement all the projects. I can help city council members and also I can do all the business to bring my friends here in years, I am working with my friends. So they come with me and they are moved from other city, city of series. Thank you very much. Mr. Kondo, what do you hope to accomplish while a part of the council? Yes, I, because of together we achieve it, 
I am working hard, man. City of series. I want to be development of city of series. So more people come and communities, people they are living together, and we need to be our sewer lines, water things, and the, <clears throat> our streets. We can go together, make improvement all the project with the city council members and officials. They can help each other and we can go through our city. So people, mostly people I can talk to the people, even they know no city of series. Modesto and Turlock, everybody know that. So people, I want to know city of series people. We are here moving our city. So people know this is city of series. So bring more project on this, our city of series. Like a Walmart, we have a big project already continue and I help and the council members. So we bring more jobs here too. So people living very happy here. Thank you, Mr. Panda. <clears throat> Mr. Kanda, what problems, issues, or concerns do you see facing the city, and how would you propose that be addressed? Mostly, we have a problem so the homeless people in this area, and they have a trash, illegal trash people throwing on the streets. Mostly, I can see it, and I have some pictures of that too. So, mostly, I can need a park. We have a people throwing the trash in the parks. So, and we can see the trash in the parking area, our park. Uh, mostly senior citizens feeling no goods and they go to the medical. So we have a more expense for the ambulance, other things they calling 911 right away. So some parks, even they don't have a restroom. So when last two weeks I sent see the Neil Park, our students, they are praying over there and they don't have a restroom, they are going in the corner of the site and they don't go pee over there. So we need to improvement on that. And city of, of series council already working on the development projects when they are going on our, the Hatch Road and Mitchell Road and the Morgan Roads. And my friend also helping me, they're bringing more project on this city of series. Almost, I have my friend who is spending $40 million on our city of series. Thank you. Okay, is there anything you'd like to add for our consideration? I am willing to work with the city of series council members. So we achieve our goal. All the project you already started in the future, long term, we need a more project and more development and other drinking waters, our roads, street lights, public safety, police department, new employment hiring. Some people, I, I talk to employees, they have a workload on that, his work. So we need a more employees for working in, for our city of cities. Any department, we need to talk to all the department heads. We need to get together. What's the problem? They have any department or any employee have any problems. So we need to talk to them. So one by one, we can make achieve everything city of series. And I want to help any time, any people, residents, they need my help. I am available 24 hour, any residents of series. So I am willing to help all city council, all city staff, and the police chief and the safety people. So we work together. This is my thinking. And thank you very much. And I appreciate everything. Thank you, Mr. Kanda. Would you do me a favor and, and grab Mr. Osgood and Mr. Martinez? They got him. Thank you. As soon as those gentlemen step in, if any members of the public or Zoom would like to make a comment, 
but we will not be asked, we will not be allowing any questions to the candidates, just strictly comments. And we'll go ahead and start off with the members of the public. Hello, everyone. My name is Natalia Herrera. Um, I'm speaking in regards for um, Conda. I do believe that he is um, a good um, person running for the city council because as he was saying, he wants to bring more money to the community as well as helping other people with their safety, their environment, their living environment, and clean up the city all in, in total. And like he's saying, he's willing to work with everyone one by one, not only the city council, but also people of the community. So I would, you know, I would love to see him helping everybody as much as he could. He does know a lot of people. So that would bring, you know, more money for the city as well to grow. And he has a lot of um, things to give back and to offer, you know. So um, I, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much. What was your name again? I'm sorry. Natalia Herrera. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members that would like to make a comment? Geniacally serious. I'd like to say something in uh, regards to uh, District 4. All these people that are the three people that are running for that position, uh, you know, you can say a lot of things. Some people come in late at uh, the race kind of thing. Some people do all kinds of things just to, to get to it. Uh, but I think we've seen enough in uh, recent months, uh, more so on the start of 2021. Uh, some of these people that are running, we haven't seen them, heard of them. Uh, maybe some of you have, but they haven't participated in uh, uh, at least coming to these kind of meetings where they're in person and letting us know where they stand. I think uh, in regards to that, I, I believe that John Osgood would do a great job. I know there's a lot of people that feel differently, but he's studied, he's well-versed, He's got his opinions to himself and to other people, so I'm sure. But he gets to the point. And a lot of those go by the codes. And that's what we need. These other people, they probably know some of them too, but they haven't spoke out. We need people to speak out. And, and I've tried and other people have tried and yourselves have tried to get people to come to council meetings to get involved. But people in the city just don't want to. Well, John Osgood stood up several months ago and started showing that he cared and he wanted to help do something to improve the situations in the city, which are many. Uh, and I think he would be a good candidate for District 4. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yakely. Next person. Council members, John Warren. I live in District 1, um, which was vacant until our uh, new member joined not too long ago, Mr. Casey. And we, as members of the community, thought the council was balanced with five positions filled. And unfortunately, um, that didn't last too long. And we're here tonight to make decision to try to balance the council again. I do have some concern um, in regards to uh, one of the candidates. Um, this gentleman just registered to vote in District 4 on the uh, 2nd of November. And last year lived in District 3, apparently and ran for a council seat in that district and was unsuccessful. I'm not quite sure whether he lives in District 3 or if he lives in District 4, but that should be a concern. Uh, the people of District 4 need to be sure that that person actually lives there. And I think the council should be sure before they make an appointment 
if they would consider that person. Um, living there 10 months basically tells me that the man moved there on January the 1st, which is New Year's Day of 2021. I don't know too many people who move on holidays, but I would be concerned. And so when I looked at the applications that were available uh, online in the city, that's kind of one of the things that jumped out at me was the length of time that the man lived in one district and now he lives in another district and he's only registered to vote there for two or three days. Actually the day before he filed, which was the last filing date. So please consider those things when you make your selection. Um, Mr. Martinez wanted to be on the planning commission and you folks wanted to put him on the planning commission. And you did not want to open up the uh, applications for considering other people as we move later into the year. And you kind of pushed because you wanted to place those people that you'd already selected in those positions. My suggestion would be leave Mr. Martinez where he is on the planning commission. And that leaves one other person for you to make a choice in the district four seat. So I do think that Mr. Osgood would do a good job. We're looking at one year, no matter which person you select at the end of that year, uh, matter of fact, going into next year, uh, probably by the middle of the summer, people would be looking at running for reelection in that particular seat. So the time is short, but uh, please um, look inside your hearts and make the right selection. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other members of the public that to speak? Seeing none. You have some on Zoom. Zoom. Yes. First person with their hand raised in Zoom is Lee Brandt. Mr. Brandt, I'll unmute your mic. Well, good evening, Council. Uh, I just have two words to say, and that's good luck. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brandt. Appreciate the words of encouragement. Anybody else? <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, Anybody? Mayor. Next person with their hand raised, Renee Ledbetter. Ms. Ledbetter, I'll unmute your mic. I'm going to promote you to panelists since it looks like you're using a different version of Zoom. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank right. you for joining us. So I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, um, but I did want to say a couple of things. First of all, I really hope you guys make a selection tonight and don't open us up for another special election, which we really cannot afford. Uh, I, I don't think we should have done the first one because we had a very qualified candidate in that uh, round of uh, applicants and the council did not do the right thing as far as I'm concerned. That's the first thing. The second thing is I agree with Mr. Warren regarding um, Mr. Conda, I believe it is, that uh, you know we're seeing more and more people in the political arena who are moving like chess pieces just to get in the game. And um, I, I think that he, just like Mr. Warren had mentioned, he did it with the intention of being able to uh, run for this district when he ran for a different district during the previous uh, go around. Um, Mr. Osgood, I do not know him very well, but uh, I think that, you know, if he's willing to put his hat in the ring, if he's willing to give it a shot, if he's willing to step up, then I don't see why we should not give him a chance to do that. Mr. Martinez, I do not know him, but again, I don't wanna see our local politicians hop from planning commission to city council like we have seen here in the past where people are just using these positions to step up to other positions. Mr. Martinez made a commitment 
to the planning commission and I would like to see him fulfill that commitment to the planning commission and to the city. So again, uh, I never thought I'd agree with Jeannie Yakeley and John Warren on uh, different topics, but here I am. And I really believe that, uh, you know, Mr. Osgood is willing to step up and I think he deserves a fair shot because right now we need to get moving, we need to move forward and we can't do that if we continue to get a deadlocked council. Now we may not, you know, we may not agree with his position and he may not be politically correct in the way he presents things, but he does get his point across. And it's time for us to get back to work and start moving forward. And that's my opinion. So I do hope you guys make the right decision. And again, like Lee said, good luck tonight because it's it's going to fall on you guys. And uh, hopefully everything will work out. I have faith that it will, and hopefully it will. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? There are no other hands raised in Zoom. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to give the uh, council an opportunity, and we'll start with Casey. If you would like to make any comments. Well, again, I, I thank the three of them for taking the time and the interest to represent their district at the, at the council level. Uh, my, my concern a little bit, you know, says, you know, we just did appoint him. He's elected, we'll have to appoint someone else. In general, I have no, no comments. I appreciate all the comments that they have. I know it's going to be a difficult decision for us to make. House member? Well, I struggled with this uh, <clears throat> because, of course, my my first hope would have been that we would have had someone with experience. I know some on the council may not agree with me, but I still believe we're a young enough council that we need someone else with more knowledge of how a, a city government runs. With all of that aside, now I'm looking at three different applicants that basically, well, no one has the experience. So then I'm going to go to, um, comments that I've heard from the public about Mr. Conda and concerns that he moved into district four right before, whether or not he did, um, right before he registered. And I'd like to remind the person that basically Cooper Conda did the same thing. He, he did it a week before the filing date and I didn't hear anyone complain about that. So that is what I'll say about Mr. Conda. Uh, Mr. Martinez, I have concerns because not only did he make the commitment to the Planning Commission, but I'm afraid that he's also made some maybe affiliations already with some of the council members. And I can remember when I first ran, there was a lot of comment from the community that they encouraged me to run because they were tired of the good old boys and they knew I wasn't going to be a good old boy. So I'm afraid if Mr. Martinez was on here, we're going to be back in the same, the same position. Mr. Osgood has um, demonstrated the passion that I believe the mayor has always talked about since he's been elected is you don't need experience, you just have to have passion. And I believe that Mr. Osgood has done that. I don't agree how he has talked to some city staff and the council in the past. I understand that he, he gets emotionally charged, but I still think that we have to respect people and 
we we can we can get our point across without belittling or yelling at people. But with all of with all of those comments, I'm going to say that my choice would be Mr. Osgood because he has demonstrated his interest in the city, his commitment by being at the meetings either in person or Zooming. I may not agree with everything he said, but it appears he does do his homework. Thank you, council member. <clears throat> so I, I will I will start off by saying that John Osgood, Daniel Martinez, and Tonda, I met all three of you after the election. I've only known you gentlemen for less than a year. And I'll start off with John Osgood. <clears throat> John Osgood has been showing up to every single city council meeting and he does show dedication and love and respect to the city. I think that is a great thing. And I say this to all members that I believe that by committing yourself on and off, not just here in public view, but also in your own personal time and what you do out there uh, reflects on you as you come here. So I, I really, really have uh, seen Mr. Osgood uh, change in a positive way especially with our exchanges that we had in the past. Um, Daniel Martinez, uh, I've seen many great things come this, from this man in, in public, always giving back to his community. Um, when he talks about, that, uh, based on the questions that were asked and how he talks about in detail what he wants to do for the city, I think is, 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 is great, it's, it's a positive, um, outlook, and it also shows that he is dedicated to the city as much as any of the other, other panelists. Mr. Conda, he is a member of the community from the city community. He does great things for the community. And I believe also in that, in that manner and respect, he's also given back to the community. So that being said, all three members are just even applying just tells me that they care about our community. So I will tell everybody here today that it, it is a difficult choice and I will just say that in my personal opinion, I feel that Daniel Martinez will be the best candidate. After going through what we went through about a year ago, I really appreciate the candidates taking the leap of faith and uh, throwing their name in the hat for this and understanding that it would only be for a year and then possibly if they were to be elected another two years, and that they should be applauded for it. And it's a very admirable thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. So now I guess the next thing that, um, is to either make a motion, go from there. Sure, I'd like to make a motion to appoint um, John Osgood to district four seat. I second it. Can I get the roll call, please? Council Member Casey. Council Member Rhino. Yes. Vice Mayor Silvera. No. And Mayor Lopez. No. Motion fails to two. Move to approve Daniel Martinez to be appointed to the District 4 seat with City Council. Thank you. Their motion. Council Member Casey? No. Council Member Rhino? No. Vice Mayor Silvera? Yep. And Mayor Lopez? Yes. Motion fails, two, two. At this moment, we're going to take a five minute recess and we will return. Or what? No, just like last time. We, yeah, we can, you can sit here, you can go wherever you want. I need to use the restroom.
So now <clears throat> we are in a two, two position once again. And um, this might seem, this might sound kind of wild, but I think that we need to make a decision today and stop the two, two split. Um, any suggestions? Suggestions or compromise? Council? Mr. Mayor, um, you know, I'm the product of this deadlock that happened at the beginning of the year. I can speak as a council person. I was uh, contacted by more than, than one person from District 4 that supported Mr. Osgood. And uh, I, you know, I was in the audience and a lot of the times Mr. Osgood was speaking his, his mind. Sometimes he got excited. But it, you, know, we, you need to um, consider, at least I need to consider, I'm considering the not a personal thing between uh, the other candidate. Uh, but like I say, uh, people that live in District 4 contacted me uh, to support Mr. Osgood. I, I personally didn't expect this to be a, a deadlock, but um, I, I have to speak freely that it would be hard pressed and, and let the, the other two candidates come up and, and convince me differently. Uh, I would have to say that I'm gonna continue to vote for Mr. Osgood. Anybody else? Any any solutions, Council? Obviously, I'm not trying to put this on any particular person at all. I just want to, I truly believe that we're better than the 2-2 two -two split. Um, I just want the council to, to really just put it on the table and maybe offer some, some solutions how we can do this. Traditional, non-traditional, it doesn't matter to me. But I think that it's, we, we shouldn't stay silent. I think we owe that, owe that to the public and owe that to the people that apply today. Well, I don't think I I don't think that I've kept silent. I think that I gave my concerns about each of the candidates. I had concerns about each of them, but in the end, I still believe Mr. Osgood has the passion mayor that you speak so often of. And I don't know how I can look past that when my first hope would have been we had someone who was experienced and when we didn't well then I go to the second choice which is what you always comment on is passion and you line up all three of them and to me Mr. Osgood is the most passionate. So what I'm asking really is besides everybody's personal opinion any options on avoiding this two, two split. That's what I'm really asking. I don't just want it to be me to, to bring these, these ideas to the table. I want the council to maybe try to figure out a way where we can leave today with the, with the candidate. What would your suggestions be mayor? I really would like you guys to make a suggestion because I always make suggestions. I don't want this to just be coming out of me. I, I, my position is I wanted to avoid this two, two split. I still want to avoid this two, two split. And 
if there's anything that you guys can think of we can do let's bring it to the table that's what i'm asking i'm thinking conventional or non-conventional is what i'm saying No ideas? Yeah, but unfortunately we're, we're not taking any more comments. Sorry. Nothing at all. I mean, I only have one suggestion. Like I said, it's, this is not something that that is totally conventional, but only the council would have to agree. Um, we have two candidates that we are trying to appoint, and I would make my suggestion would be either, and, and stop me when I say this, but call me crazy, either flip a coin or we put those two names in that cup right here, and whatever name we ask someone to pull is the person we appoint. That's the only that's the only suggestion that I had. And I said, call me crazy. But I want to avoid this special election that we talk about avoiding. I want to avoid this reputation that we've had as a council of a two two split. I hope that you guys don't think, uh, at least not me, this is, this is hard for me. Don't get me wrong. And, I, and this is not taken away from none of any council member's opinion. I'm not here to change your mind. It's not my goal. I just want to avoid this 2-2 split so we can continue with this city business. I'll wait till the two candidates come back. Looks like they stepped out for a second. Thank you everybody for your patience. Once those two candidates come in, we'll continue. Do you gentlemen have anything to say? No? Yeah, how about this? Uh, maybe I'll, the last two candidates step up and say some final words before we continue. 
Are you guys open to that? Don always has something to say. Majority of the people that speak every night that speak to this council are ignored. The people, people we represent, not only as fellow citizens, but as council members. The people are always ignored. That's why I stand before you as an applicant tonight to give the voice back to the people, back to the, the people of District 4. The voice doesn't rest with any individual council member or a consensus thereof. The voice rests with the people, and the people are clear biweekly. The people have been clear tonight. We're going to do this in a year. Think back two meetings. Think back three meetings. I have come to this podium and kept the meeting going. When there was dispute between the four of you, I stepped up and I said, Mr. Yakely's comments can be held in, handled under new business. It preceded the meeting. When we didn't know how we were going to address this vacancy, I stood up and I said, Mr. Martinez is applying, I'm applying, and Mr. Klein was here. We're all on the same page. Let's get it on. We've done our part. The citizens have done their part. It's time for this council to grow up and do your part. Listen to the people you're supposed to represent. Everyone here is begging for you guys to be grown-ups, to represent us as we wish. Nothing to do with Mr. Martinez not being just as spiritual or just as good of a man as I am. It has to do with the people of theories that are ignored constantly. Thank you. Council? Ms. Hay? Okay. Well, this is a very, very difficult decision, but I sure as heck do not want to go to a special election. <clears throat> so last call, no council member would change their opinion. No, I said no other council members want to change their opinion. No, Mr. Mayor, I changed my opinion. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so, you know, I just will address John Osgood real quick. Um, yes, you're right. You show up to every sing single city council meeting. And obviously, we're all growing ups. And just like I was saying a couple minutes ago, that I don't want to go into a special election. I'm not going to waste the city council's time. Okay, and Mr. Martinez, you obviously see that nobody is budging. Okay, you're on the planning commission. You're going to do great things. All I got to say, Mr. Osgood, don't let me down. We're on this dais. You're closer to me than you are over there. Council members, make a motion. Good point, John Osgood to District 4. Second. Roll call. Council Member Casey. Aye. Council Member Reno. Yes. Vice Mayor Sarah. No. And Mayor. Aye. Motion passes 3 1. Let's go home. Thank you guys. This meeting is now adjourned.